Welcome to the Comma Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Edge Rusher Production Data Highlights. Now, as the season gets forward, because I have got I, I've got a lot of comments on some of my past videos about running back analytics, wide receiver production analytics, tight end uh, production analytics. I've got a lot of comments of like, why, where are the percentile scores? Percentile scores are going to come once I have a clear idea of who is actually declaring for the NFL draft. So I don't want to put a ton of work in on players who inevitably don't declare for the NFL draft. If that makes any sense at all to, to you guys. But as soon as that's done, as soon as final declarations are done and we know all the underclassmen that are entering and all that other kind of stuff, then we're going to get more specific with actual percentile scores. So we're, we're you know, getting more specific when it comes to that kind of thing. However, this video is purely to highlight players to get you, to get you ahead of the curve, so to speak, of players who put up production profiles that are indicative of high quality to starter level players for the most part uh, for this season. Um, there's definitely going to be some things changing. There's, there's going to be some players being added uh, and all the other kind of stuff. But this is basically to highlight the players who production wise stood out the most now you might be wondering okay what production are you talking about I'm talking about market share production and it definitely is a is a is a uh, different concept to most but all market share production is at the defensive position is you take a individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistic so for example if you have an edge rusher who has 10 sacks and he's on a team that has 40 sacks then that edge rusher had 25% sack market share. But what you do with that number is you take that number and you take all the numbers of every edge rusher who played college football or was drafted since 1989 and you get to see, okay, this is how Hall of Famers typically performed when it comes to market share. This is how pro bowlers typically perform when it comes to market share. This is how starters usually perform when it comes to market share. If that makes any sense at all. So that is essentially what defensive market share is. Uh, when it applies to the edge rusher position, the three main uh, statistics we're looking at is solo tackle market share, which gives you an idea of how often they're around the ball. That's the basic, it's the find the ball mentality statistic. If you're getting a lot of solo tackles as an edge rusher, you are on the ball. You're on the money. You know where the ball is going. You're making plays on the ball. You're not just a guy who's just sacking the quarterback, getting a tackle for loss, and that's it. You know, you're not a one or nothing kind of guy. Because there's a lot of edge rushers, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of edge rushers who are successful that are one and done type guys. You know, they're guys that don't really find the ball very well, but they definitely can get sacks and get TFO. There's nothing wrong with those guys. But all the Hall of Famers, all the really high quality edge rushers since 1989 were find the ball mentality guys. All of them. So you can't ignore solo tackle data. In fact, solo tackle data based on all the data is really one of the biggest indicators of just being successful at all. Uh, I mean, sacks and TFO do matter, but solo tackle, you could find more high quality edge rushers by just focusing purely on solo tackle data. You really could. Uh, now you're going to miss some of the guys who get sacks in TFL, but you're going to hit on more high quality guys if you hit on the if you just look at the solo tackle data stuff. So that's basically what solo tackle is. Sack market share is purely that. It's how many sacks you got relative to your team. It's a good indicator of one: are you productive as a edge rusher? Sacks are one indicator of that. But two, it also shows you how much do other teams have to commit to stopping you if you are an edge rusher if you're game plan just put it from this perspective if you are a team that's game planning and you have a edge rusher that is making up 45 percent of the sacks of that team wouldn't you be trying to stop that guy wouldn't you be trying to do anything at all to set up things schematically to make life harder for that guy to get sacks and if that guy gets sacks even despite all that stuff, that really does tell you something about that player. That really does. 
I mean, sack market share to me, it's not so much about the fact of, oh, you're getting a lot of sacks. It's about the fact that you're getting a lot of sacks and the other team is doing a lot of stuff to stop you and you still get a lot of sacks. Because it's easy to be on a team, because that's the other thing too. You could be on a team that gets 60 sacks and you get 10. That's definitely impressive to get 10 sacks, but it's much more impressive if you're on a team and you get 10 sacks and you're on a team that only has like 30 sacks. It's just much more impressive, you know, from a statistical standpoint, from a market share perspective. So you have that, and then of course you have TFL market share, which is basically tackle for loss market share. A lot of this uh, deals with run stopping, gives you an idea of their ability to get into the backfield and stuff the run and, and those kind of aspects. It does not mean that you are a great run defender, though, if you have a really good TFL mark, but it is at least indicative that you're able to get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground, create a negative play. You know, it's another one of those indicators. Of how often are you in the backfield? How often are you creating havoc relative to the rest of your team? Um, so that's basically that point. So let's get to the players. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I did want to highlight all the players that stuck out the most based on market share data. Um, all the players that I'm listing right now hit high quality market share production thresholds and they hit every single one they hit the solo tackle they hit the sack and they hit the tfl typically speaking when you're talking about high quality edge rushers you want them to hit every single category you want them to hit the solo tackle category you want them to hit the sack threshold and you want to want them to hit the tfl threshold if they're now are there going to be players who don't hit solo tackle and end up being successful absolutely are there players that don't hit the sack and end up being successful sure they, they don't hit the TFL. Yeah, they're, they're probably still going to be successful. Some of them might end up still being successful. But when it comes to high-quality edge rushers, Hall of Famers, really, really special players, pro bowlers, all pro players, all those guys, they typically hit every single statistical category threshold. So I just want to emphasize that because now, does this mean that all the players on this list are going to be Hall of Famers? Absolutely not. But it's just to let you know that these are players who share similar data traits to past high quality players. That's the best way you can kind of think about this. Because there's definitely going to be players that show you traits. Running backs that show you traits. Quarterbacks that show you traits. Uh, like, for example, a quarterback looks off coverage, for example. Uh, or a quarterback hits a check down. That it, hit, uh, a quarterback hitting a check down is a trait of, competency, of uh, competency at the quarterback position. But just because you can hit a check down doesn't necessarily mean that you're Joe Montana, obviously, because there's more traits that make Joe Montana. There's a collection of traits that make that. Similar situation here. These are data traits. Just because you have data traits does not mean that you're gonna be a special player, but it does mean that you share traits with special players, and then it's a matter through film study, through character evaluation, through all the other kind of stuff to figure out if you make up what most of the great players had also other than the traits of production. So again, these are all the players uh, that hit all of the uh, market share points. Uh, Brian Womack, uh, Bradley Chubb. I mean, a lot, of these game, a lot of these names people are pretty familiar with. Uh, Ola Sun Kanmi Adinayi probably saying that wrong but uh, he's a Toledo pass rusher um, Sutton Smith uh, Ogbania of course from Oklahoma uh, Marcus Davenport from UTSA uh, Anthony Winbush from Ball State uh, Sion uh, Taki Taki from BYU uh, Javon Roland Jones from Arkansas State he's more of a linebacker rusher just to throw that out there so he's kind of a unique guy but definitely performed well i mean his his data is indicative of an edge rusher is all i'm trying to say uh and then of course you get carl uh granderson uh justin lawler from smu khalil brooks chris peace and matt boson now in the the description i'm going to include a link to the spreadsheet that has all of the data of every single edge rusher uh every every edge rusher edge rusher uh, performance in 2017 so if there are players on this list and you don't see them, and you're like, where's this guy? Where's that guy? Go to that link, look at that link, and you'll have all the information you want. 
you know so you'll know okay where where their failings are did they fail solo tackle did they fail sack did they fail tfl because a lot of those players might end up still being successful players but they may not necessarily be high quality players for example so that's just kind of throwing that out there so again you can go to the description and go to the link there and get all the information there and of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.